نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر بن احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمنا رشتا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا جتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہو ورس 103 سورة النساء فَإِذَا قَزَيْتُمُ السَّلَوَاتَ فَاسْقُرُوا اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقَعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِكُمْ And when you have completed the prayer, remember Allah, standing, sitting, or lying on your sides. But when you become secure, re-establish regular prayer. Indeed, Prayer has been decreed upon the believers, a decree of specified times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse 102 of Surah An-Nisa was talking about an option or the permission of altering the congregational salah in a state of fear. When there is fear of the attack of an enemy or in the state of war that is in the actual <coughs> that is in the actual battlefield Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suggested us an alternative method to carry on the salah on the proper time and as a congregational salah now in this verse 103rd 100 now verse Allah is mentioning that after you have completed your salah. Then in this state, keep on doing what? Allah says, فَاسْقُرُوا Keep on doing zikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah, in whatever form you can. So now, zikr of Allah, a remembrance of Allah, has been ordered here by the Almighty Allah Himself. So many times has Allah mentioned the believers and his bondsmen, the remembrance of Allah. Surah Ahzab, verse 41, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunu dhkurullaha dhikran kathiran wa thabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. O believers, remember Allah with much remembrance and glorify him morning and evening. So Allah in this verse is ordering all of us to make as much remembrance as possible and to and for remembrance to glorify him in our re remembrance morning or evening or from morning till evening. Similarly in Surah Araf Verse 205, Allah says, وَاذْقُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَزَرُّوَمْ وَحِيْفًا And remember your Allah within yourself with humility and with fear. And then Allah says, وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And do not be among those who are heedless, who are forgetful, who just forget or who are just Ignorance of the remembrance of Allah. Similarly, in Surah Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 19 says, Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the, the situation when a person forgets the remembrance of Allah. He forgets about mentioning and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the punishment would be what Allah says, be not like those who forget Allah, so he makes them forget their own souls. 
A person who forgets the Creator will be made to forget himself. A person who forgets the remembrance of Allah will be made to forget or will be getting forgetful about his own requirements, about his own guidance, about his own hereafter. That is why Allah keeps on asking us every now and then in the Quran, keeps on repeating as in Surah Juma, verse number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْقُرُوا اللَّهَ قَسِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Remember Allah Remember Allah in excellence so that you may prosper, so that you may be successful. To prosper, to be successful here and hereafter. What do we need to do? Extensive and frequent and regular remembrance of our Creator. To keep on glorifying Him, to keep on saying the word of His of his attributes of praising him. Surah Hazab, verse number 35, Allah says, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ قَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ عَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا And men who remember Allah much and women who remember Allah, Allah has prepared forgiveness and what ajran azima mighty rewards. Great, huge rewards for those men and women who remember, who remember Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us not to forget remembering Allah, not to omit remembrance of Allah in our lives. Surah Munafikun, verse Verse 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, la tulhikum amwalakum wa la awlatukum an dhikrullah, wa man yafal dhalika fa'ulaika humul khasirun. O believers, let not your children, let not your children and your riches and your worldly wealths divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does that, does what? That out of the diversion and getting busy and getting preoccupied and getting committed in our children or in our worldly riches and earning and whatnot, whoever does so, they are the losers. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And then what is the reward and what is the excellence and what will a believer gain out of the remembrance of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ankabut, verse 45 says, Wala dhikrullahi akbar. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. There is no doubt that what? In remembrance of Allah is the greatest deed. Remembrance of Allah in the sight of Allah, in the life of the believer is the greatest deed. It is the deed which is the deed of excellence, of the highest merit. How excellent it is, we can understand by the question and by the conversation of the companions and the Prophet ﷺ. The companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, we all, we all fast. Whoever, whoever of us will be rewarded with the greatest reward for fasting. Prophet ﷺ said, who remembers Allah the most. Then they asked, we all perform jihad. We all go for jihad. Whom of us will be gifted and will be rewarded with the greatest reward? Prophet ﷺ repeated the same words, whoever, whoever will remember Allah the most. Then they asked, we all go for Hajj. We all perform the Hajj. Who will be rewarded with the greatest reward? Prophet ﷺ again repeated the same words, whoever does the greatest remembrance of Allah. So this is, so this is exactly the merit and the importance of Zikr of Allah. That whichever deed and in whichever activity we are in a state of remembrance, that for that virtue and for that good deed, we will be rewarded a multiple and the maximum possible reward we can be given. 
And from here also, and from this verse, and from the words of the Prophet ﷺ, we can also collect the mannerism and the the style in which a believer is needed to remember Allah. How are we expected to carry on the remembrance of Allah? It does not or in no form does the remembrance of the Allah of Allah Azza wa Jal mean that the believers should leave all the worldly activities or the worldly commitments and their normal day-to-day -day life works and they quit all their duties and they forget all their responsibilities, everything set aside, they sit in a corner or in a place and just give up and leave and abandon everything, all duties, all commitments, all works, all responsibilities and just sit aside for some time, for a specific time and keep on remembering Allah or praising Allah or glorifying Allah in some of the verses as in some of the words as suggested by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in, in form of a in form of a ritual. And the person doing all this remembrance, sitting aside, leaving all the works and duties, that woman, maybe a woman, she is just not bothered about serving food to her husband who has just come back from the office. Or she is just not even bothered about looking after the sick mother-in-law. But there she is sitting in the corner of the house in a specified time and doing a specific counting of remembrances and glorification verses. Now, this is by no means the style or the manner a believer needs to carry out remembrance of Allah. You know, how a person is supposed to carry out the remembrance of Allah is that the whole body, all the parts of the body of the believer are busy and are engaged and are involved in, in carrying out the duties and in paying the rights of Allah and the rights of the fellow beings. The whole of the body is busy and all the parts of the body are dutifully, conscientiously and sincerious, sincerely working for completing, fulfilling the rights of the fellow beings, their parents, their children, the spouse, the neighbors, the relations of kin, and of course, the rights of Allah. But at the same time, concurrently, at the same time, when the body and all the parts of the body are working, this, the heart is remembering Allah and the tongue is supple with the, with the glorification of Allah. So this is how we, all of you, are needed to carry on remembrance of Allah in our day-to-day -day life. And this is exactly, this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, the manner of the sensible and the wise people in Surah Al-Imran, verse 190 and 191. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي خُلْكِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَى فِي اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتِ لِّئُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْقُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقَعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Surely in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alteration of night and day, there are signs for men of wisdom, for men who are sensible, for men who are wise, for the men of understanding. And who are these men of understanding? The men of understanding and the wise men are those who remember Allah standing, sitting and lying on their sides. So this precisely should be in future the style of remembrance of Allah in our day-to-day -day life, carrying on our normal day-to-day -day activities, but at the same time remembering Allah. <coughs> And this is exactly what this verse number 103 of Surah An-Nisa is also saying. Similarly, in Surah Juma, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that after you order the Salah of Juma in the congregation, then do what? Allah says, 
in a verse 10 of surah juma fa iza quziyat as-salatu fa tashru fil arz wabtagu min fadlillahi wazkurullah haqqa thirul la'allakum tuflikun so on fridays after you offer your obligatory uh, congregational juma prayers then do what then after the salah is ended disperse in the land and seek allah's bounty and do what remember allah that you may prosper so it is not that after your salah you sit in a corner of the house or in a corner of the mosque leaving everything behind no go away move away in the earth and get dispersed and seek and earn for yourself lawful earnings but at the same time keep on remembering allah and that is the source of prospering and this will be the source of success hereafter and hereafter similarly in surah al-baqarah verse 200 allah says regarding talking about the worships of uh, hajj allah says fa iza qazaytum manasikakum fasqurullah haqqa dhikri aba'akum aw ashaddan zikran and whoever has performed the devotional rites remember then what after completing all the worships of hajj do what remember allah so this is the style we all and all the believers are expected and supposed to believe allah azza wa jal and then what would a believer gain out of gain out of the remembrance of allah the first thing i've said allah says wala dhikrullah akbar it is the greatest deed it is the most excellent of all the deeds and then any activity in which the person was remembering allah the person will be rewarded as the maximum reward the next thing watch what this remembrance of allah is going to help us with in surah rad verse 13 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say uh, verse 28 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ala bi dhikrillah tatma'innu alqulub remember remember in the remembrance of allah do hearts find satisfaction so this is the importance of remembrance for all of us in the world of today in the world of today with all the anxieties the tensions the miseries the stresses and people stressed out all anxious and all tense landing up in nervous tensions every person is like trying to find sources of contentment and sources of peace peace of mind and satisfaction of the soul everybody is at it and you see people around you trying to find out peace of mind and contentment and happiness for the soul so many things people are attempting like hoteling dining out eating as much as you can trying to wear expensive dresses to look smart and elegant to make themselves happy to socialize traveling around the world going around sightseeing then people try to relax themselves cool down their nerves unwind themselves by drinking by dancing by music and what not and then we see people try to find relaxation and to to unwind themselves you see people gulping down pills of anti anxiety relaxants tranquilizers hypnotic sedatives and what not all forms of medicines people are try to take to relax themselves as an antidepressant therapy and then people going to psych- psychiatrists and psychologists for counseling to relax themselves and to tone themselves down and to unwind their nerves but no nowhere other than nowhere other than returning towards our creator our sustainer can we find satisfaction in the remembrance of allah do the souls find satisfaction and peace and contentment rabbiyani ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik 
Prophet Sallallahu used to recite these words after the Salah. O oh Allah, O oh our Sustainer, help us in your remembrance and help us in your gratitude. So Prophet Sallallahu used to ask for the ability to remember and the ability to be grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And in remembrance of Allah, can we stay free from all the evil thoughts and the evil desires the shaitan puts or instills or injects in the minds and in the souls. As Prophet said, that there are two parts of the heart. In one part does the angel reside and in the other part the shaitan resides. And when the person remembers Allah and when the person is busy or it is actively involved in the remembrance of Allah, then the shaitan, shaitan goes away from there and the shaitan flees, flees away from there. But when the person stops remembering Allah and leaves the remembrance of Allah, then the shaitan returns and the shaitan very secretively puts his beak on the part of the heart he resides in. And then the shaitan does what? Shaitan puts a very a hidden idea or a hidden concept of an evil deed, of an evil desire, of a forbidden desire. So to save ourselves from all the attacks, from all the evil attacks of this Arduwa Mubin of Shaitan, we and our children, we want to save them from the attacks of Shaitan, then we need to be in a state of remembrance. And then it is the order of Allah. Allah orders us all. Verse 152 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, wala takfuruni. Remember me. This is an order of Allah and with an order of Allah, Allah is promising us also. Remember me. I shall remember you. Be grateful me, to me and do not be ungrateful to me. So this is a order of Allah and in return of the people who obey this order of Allah and remember him, Allah promises that I shall remember you. How does Allah remember the bondsmen? Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah says, these are the words of Allah reported and recited by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah says, I live in the thought of my slave. As he thinks of me, I am with him when he remembers me if he remembers me inwardly, I shall remember him inwardly. If he remembers me among an assembly, I shall remember him among an assembly that is better than they are in. Which assembly? The assembly of angels. And how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember a person who is in a state of remembrance of Allah? Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu said that whenever and wherever people sit and remember Allah, angels surround them. And remembrance of Allah will be what? Will be glorifying Allah, will be talking about his attributes, would be talking about his blessings and his bounties, would be talking about his orders and his commandments about the things we, which he has forbidden and about the boundaries of his orders and commandments. So when people are sitting and they are remembering Allah, angels surround them surely and mercy of Allah covers them and peace descends on them and Allah mentions them among the angels who are near to him. So four distinct blessings are for those who remember Allah, that the angels surround them from all the sides. Mercy of Allah envelops them and they peace descends on their hearts. Sakina or peace descends on their hearts. 
and Allah mentions them in the in front of the angels who are near to Allah. And then in another wor words, Prophet Sallallahu has also reported that whenever a person remembers Allah or there are people gathered in an assembly where they are remembering and talking about Allah, then the angels, they spread their wings beneath these, beneath the feet of these people and they keep on praying and asking for forgiveness and mercy of these people. And in another hadith, Prophet ﷺ also said that asking for forgiveness and mercy for these people who are in a gathering of remembrance are whom? The birds in the sky, the living creatures under the water, in the seas and in the oceans, and the wild beasts in the jungles, in the forests, and the angels in the sky. So this is the excellence of remembrance of Allah. And then there is a very long and a very lengthy hadith of the Prophet Wasallam regarding the excellence of the remembrance of Allah. I would be narrating now the summary of all the words is that Prophet ﷺ said that angels go about, they roam about in the earth searching for gatherings where people remember Allah. So it is a norm of the angels. They go about, they roam about in the earth and they are looking for what? They are looking for certain assemblies and gatherings where the believers have gathered and they are remembering Allah. And when the angels find such a gathering, when they come across such a gathering, what do these angels do? They encircle and they assemble around this gathering. And then what happens next is that all the Allah's angels who are coming and going, who are just traveling between the earth and the heaven, these, these angels, they stop them also. And then what happens next? that all the angels, they gather around this gathering and this assembly from the earth till the heaven, they encircle them. And in this state of encircling the people in the gathering where remembrance of Allah is being done, all these angels do what? All these angels, as long as these people are in this gathering, the angels keep on praying, keep on asking Allah Azza wa Jal for their forgiveness and for mercy for these people. And then when the gathering finishes and the assembly dissembles and the people walk off and the people move away, then these angels also depart. And in the heaven, they are presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there, there is a very beautiful conversation. <coughs> there is a wonderful conversation between the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The words of the hadith say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite knowing everything, he asks the angels that who were they? And the angels say, Allah, they were your bondsmen, they were your slaves, they were the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, what were they doing? The angels repeat and answer back. They say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had gathered for your remembrance and they were remembering you, they were talking about you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, will ask them, what did they want? Why had they gathered? What was the purpose of their gathering? And what was the purpose and the cause of their remembrance? Angels will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, uh, they were all desirous of your Jannah. Allah will ask, have they seen my Jannah? Angel will say, no, they have not. If they had seen your Jannah, they, have, they would have been even more desirous than they are. Then they will, then the angel will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were desirous of being freed, of being released from your hell. Allah will ask, have they seen my hell? 
The angels will say, no, they have not. But if they had seen your hell, their desire to be freed, to be saved or to be escaped from hell would have been even more intense and severe. And then the angels will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were desirous of your forgiveness. They were desirous that you forgive them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then declare, by my honor, by my honor, Allah will swear, swear by his own honor and say, oh my angels, you go ahead and you announce and you declare for all of them, for all of them who had assembled for my remembrance that I have forgiven them before they got up to leave. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. This is the merit of remembrance of Allah. Allah forgives. Allah forgives all the sins and pardons all the wrongdoings and overlooks all the all the wrongdoings of person who is in a state of remembrance. And then such beautiful are the words which Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Bukhari that Prophet said that Allah exalted has said. So these again are the words of Allah the Almighty himself. Hadith al Qudsi, Allah says, I am with my slave when he remembers me and I am the closest to him when his lips move in mentioning me. So believe you me, my sisters, my daughters, when we are, when we are uttering in our hearts, remembering in our hearts or uttering by the word of our mouth or humming in our mouth or our tongue is moving or our lips are moving, then we have the closeness, the reward of the closeness and the nearness of our sustainer, of our creator, of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah gets close to the person. So after zikr, when Allah is close, all the prayers and all the supplications will also be heard. That is why Allah keeps on keeps on ordering us to do remembrance. In Surah Muzammil, verse number 8, Allah says, وَاسْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Detach yourself from the worldly things and devote yourself entirely to the remembrance of Allah. Prophet said, Hazrat Abu Darda who reports in Musnad Ahmad Tarimsi and Ibn Majah, that Prophet said, Shall I not tell you the best of your deeds and the purest in the estimation of your Allah, through which your ranks are raised highest? And better for you than spending gold and silver, and better for you than you meet your enemy and Allah's enemy and kill them. And they kill you. They said, Yes, do let us know. Do show us all these precious deeds. He said, It is to keep in the state of remembrance of Allah. Qasat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Musad Ahmad at the Rimzi that Prophet sallallahu was asked who would be the most excellent, who amongst most, who amongst us would be the most excellent and the most exalted in the sight of Allah on the day of resurrection. Prophet sallallahu said the men and women who remember Allah often, they will be given the excellence and the ranks on the day of resurrection. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar who reports that Prophet said, everything has a polish. You know what the polish does? Makes something shine, makes it purer, makes it cleaner, makes it brighter, makes it more beautiful, makes it more excellent. Everything has a polish. And the polish for the hearts is remembrance of Allah. Rabbi ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. And the polish for the hearts is remembrance of Allah. Nothing is as effective in rescuing from the punishment of Allah as is the remembrance of Allah. He was asked, 
Although jihad in the path of Allah, Prophet Sallallahu said, not even that one should ply with his soul till, his, till it is broken. So this is the merit of remembrance of Allah. Hazrat Abdullah bin Busr radiallahu ta'ala who reposed in Tirmizi that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Messenger of Allah, that he was asked, Messenger of Allah, which deed is the most excellent deed? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, that you leave this world, that you leave this world where your tongue is fresh with the remembrance of Allah. Rabbi a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Hazrat Abdullah bin Busr radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirimzi that there was a person who came and he asked that there are too many virtuous deeds for anyone to do. That is that the list of the virtuous deeds in Quran and Hadith, it is too long. Too many virtuous deeds for anyone to do and it is beyond me to perform all of them. So tell me something which I might just cling to. Tell me just some brief deeds which I might just cling to and which should be enough for me. And then he again requested that whatever you recommend should not be too much for me for that I may forget. And Prophet ﷺ made such a comprehensive, such a brief advice was that let your tongue. Let your tongue continue to be supple by the mentioning of the names of Allah, by the mentioning of the attributes of Allah. How brief, in nutshell, the remembrance of Allah. In summary, the remembrance of Allah. And how much and how frequently in what form and manner Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim Ahmad that Prophet said, make mentioning of Allah frequently, so frequently and so often that people may call you silly or people may call you mad. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allah make us one of those silly and foolish and mad people. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Abu Dawud that Prophet said, if anyone sits at a place where he fails to remember Allah and he stays deprived of the remembrance of Allah, the laws will descend on him from Allah because of that neglectful sitting. And if anyone lies down somewhere and fails to remember Allah, then that lying down will bring him being deprived and a loss from Allah. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Hazrat Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tarimzi and explains that a person is speaking too much and not mentioning Allah, then this will lead to the heart becoming very hard. So now, after talking about the merits and the excellence of remembrance of Allah, we next need to realize that how can we do all this? What do we actually mean by the remembrance of Allah? <coughs> and how is a believer in his life going to conduct remembrance of Allah? The first act is Salah. The first and the foremost and the most virtuous and the most excellent Act of remembrance is no doubt Salah. Surah Toha, verse 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders, Aqimis salata li dhikri. Establish Salah for my remembrance. So the best deed and the easiest deed for the remembrance of Allah is offering Salah. Surah An Kabut, verse number 45, Allah says about Salah, In the salata tanha anil faqsha iwal munkar. There is no doubt, absolutely no doubt, surely Salah forbids indecency and evil deeds. And there is also no deed, no doubt that remembrance of Allah is the greatest deed. The second act of remembrance is 
connecting with Quran and staying connected with Quran, reciting, listening, learning, teaching, memorizing, or any form of connection and contact with the Quran would also be a form of remembrance of Allah. Because Quran itself is a thikr. Quran itself is remembrance. As Allah says in verse 9 of Surah Al-Hijr, Surely it is we ourselves who have revealed it step by step. And it is we who shall guard it from all corruptions. So connecting with Quran is also a very excellent deed of remembering Allah. And then the third method of remembrance will be the supplications. The supplications, the duas, which we learn from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam being recited morning and evening. That is after the Fajr prayers and after the Asr prayers. As Allah says that remember Allah and praise and glorify Allah before the sunrise and before the sunset. So it is when it is after we offer our Fajr Salah and after we offer our Asr Salah. These are the supplications taught to all the believers and these are the best best of words for supplicating to Allah, for supplicating and asking for protection from Allah and also the best words for praising and glorifying Allah and the best words and the best style of remembrance of Allah. And then the supplications taught by the Prophet ﷺ after Salah. And fifth will be all the words of the supplications taught by the Prophet ﷺ for the various day-to-day -day activities. Like Prophet ﷺ has taught us many supplication and words before sleeping, when we wake up, when we start eating and when we finish eating and when drinking, when riding, when driving, when dressing up or when taking off clothes, when different different things, different activities, Prophet ﷺ has taught us the words. So reciting all these will also be what? It will be catered as and counted in remembrance of Allah. And then last but not the least, the specified words of zikr which has been which have been taught by the Prophet. ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ has taught as in many words of hadith and in many sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ, his manners, do we find him reciting these specific words of remembrance of Allah, the tasbihat which have been taught and suggested by the Prophet ﷺ. Now as far as, the, as these words of zikr or the tasbihat, I will be now mentioning and suggesting a few <coughs> and explaining the excellence and the merit of all of these words as suggested and taught by the Prophet The most excellent form of remembrance is La ilaha illallah. How excellent it is. Hazrat Jabir ta'ala and who reports in Tirmizi and Ibn Majah Afdalul Zikri la ilaha illallah, the most excellent zikr and the most excellent remembrance of Allah is to say la ilaha illallah that there is no God but Allah. Accepting and reciting and announcing and declaring the faith in oneness of Allah, this is the most excellent of all forms of zikr. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tirmidhi that Prophet said, No slave does utter la ilaha illallah sincerely. No slave utters la ilaha illallah sincerely, but that the gates of heaven are open for him until it comes up to the throne as long as he avoids the major sins. And another hadith in Tirmidhi, 
Prophet Sallallahu said, Wala ilaha illallah, laysa laha hijabun min dunillah, hatta tahlusu ilayhi. There is no barrier. There is absolutely no barrier between la ilaha illallah and Allah. And it reaches him directly. It reaches him directly. When we say that with all the sincerity and honesty from the depth and from the core of our heart. How, how excellent it is to keep on saying these words, la ilaha illallah. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam asked that, O oh Allah, all your servants say this and I want something particularly for myself. Allah said to him, Allah told Hazrat Musa kalimullah, Musa, Musa alayhi salam were the seven heavens were the seven heavens and their inhabitants apart from me and the seven earths put together in a pan and la ilaha illallah in the other pan the kalima la ilaha illallah would outweigh them so this is there is no expression more valuable for prophet sallallahu and for allah then this word, La ilaha illallah. In other, in other words, which Prophet has taught us to recite is Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wa La ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar. As a Sumura bin Jundub Raziallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim, the Prophet said, the most excellent words are four. The most Excellent words are for Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Glory be to Allah. All praise belongs to Allah. There is no God except Allah, and Allah is the greatest. So, Prophet has labeled these as the four most excellent words. Similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim that Prophet said to say Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah to say all this is dearer to me. Dearer to whom? Dearer to the Prophet To say these words is dearer to me than everything on which the sun rises and throws its rays on. So these four words were dearer to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than all than all the things in the world. How important it is, Hazrat Anas Raziallahu Ta'ala and who reports in Tirmidhi that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he was walking out and he came across a tree and the leaves of the tree were dry and they were falling off and they were shedding. And Prophet Sallallahu had a stick in his hand and with the stick he shook the branches of the tree and the leaves started falling even more. And then exhibiting and demonstrating this he said that the words, the words of Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, they shed away the sins of a believer just as you see the leaves of the trees are being said, shed. So when we, you, all of us, we're going to say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. The sins will shed. The sins will be forgiven. The sins and evil deeds will be pardoned off and they will shed as if the leaves shed off, the dried leaves shed off the trees. Rabbi'ayni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. And this is actually according to the promise of Allah, promise of Quran. As in Surah Hud, verse 114, Allah has promised, In al hasanat yushibna sayyat, Surely there are going to be good deeds which will dry away the evil deeds or the sins. So remembrance of Allah is a good deed. It is a virtue which drives away all the sins and all the evil deeds. And then another 
In other words, which were recited by the Prophet Sallallahu are Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. And there is another addition also Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari and Muslim the Prophet Sallallahu said that if anyone says a hundred times a day, what? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Glory be to Allah and I begin with praise to Him. Then if a person says this, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, a hundred times a day, then his sins will be forgiven for him even if they are like the foam of a sea. Such extensively committed sins will also be forgiven if a person is going to say one hundred times in a day. Hazrat Abu Zar Ghaffari who reports in Muslim that Prophet said, he was asked, which words are the most excellent for us to keep on reciting for the remembrance of Allah? He said, what Allah has chosen. Prophet said, what Allah has chosen for his angels. The words which Allah has chosen and has taught the angels. And they are, subhanallah wa bihamdihi. So this is, these are the words in which the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal, they glorify him and they praise him and they remember Allah. And for similar words, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet said, Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisani saqilatani fil mizani habibatani ila rahmani subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al azim. Prophet said, there are two expressions. There are two expressions which are light for the tongue. That is, they are, they are very easy to be said. It's no difficult. They're very light for the tongue, but heavy in the scale. Which scale? The scale on the day of judgment. But heavy in the scale and very dear to Allah Azza wa Jal. And these two words are, recite again with me. Subhanallah, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -azim. Nothing will be comparable to the names of Allah in weight, as Allah's Prophet says in Tirmizi. La yazinu ma'asmihil, ma'asmihillahi shayyun. And Subhanallah wa bihamdihi and Subhanallah al -azim is the will be the heaviest in weight in the scales. And then mother of believers has a Javeria Raziallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu after offering his Fajr Salah he went out and he passed close to me and I was sitting at a place of worship that is wherever I had offered my Salah I was sitting there and I was reciting uh, one of these uh, like Malik any Malik. Uh, verses or any expressions I was reciting and um, then Prophet Sallallahu he returned at the time of the charged prayers and he found that I was still sitting there on the place on the prayer of the rag where I had, he had left me in the morning. And he asked me that, is it that you were sitting here where I left you? You've been sitting here? She said, yes. And Prophet Sallallahu said, since leaving you, I said four expressions three times. I said four expressions three times, which evade against all you have said today. Then what I said would prove heavier. And these four expressions were, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adada khalkihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa ridha nafsihi, wa midada kalimatihi. Glory be to Allah, with praise from Him equal to the number of His creatures, as weighty as His throne, in accordance with His player, and to the extent of His words. So this is again an extremely, extremely excellent form of words or any excellent form of um, Zikr we can do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports 
another hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Wasallam has mentioned and has promised that if anyone repeats a hundred times a day, what la ilaha illallah, wahtahu la sharika lahu, lahul mulku, wa lahul hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. There is no God but Allah. He has no partners and he has, to him belongs all the praise and he is the omnipotent. Then he will get reward equal to one for emancipating ten slaves. The person who says this a hundred times will be given the reward of a person who is emancipating ten slaves and hundred blessings will be recorded for him and hundred evil deeds will be forgiven for him and it will be a protection from him for devil for the whole of the day till evening and no one's deed will be more excellent than his unless the person has done more than he has. And then Another expression is La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Hazrat Abu Musa Ashri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim and Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that shall I teach you an expression? Shall I teach you an expression that is from the treasures of paradise? The passengers, the companions said, yes, messenger of Allah, do teach us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, it is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power or no might except with Allah. And this is from one of the treasures of paradise. Another hadith reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira is that Prophet said that it is an expression from under the throne of Allah, which is a part of the treasures of paradise. And this is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And then memorizing and reciting the names of Allah. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Surely Allah has 99 names, one less than 100, he who retains them, meaning that he who memorizes them, he who retains them will go to paradise. So a promise of paradise for the person who memorizes, who recites the names, 99 names of Allah, which Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna فَدْعُوهُ biha." So who calls Allah by these names, who recites these names, will actually be what? He will be introduced to all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be able to recognize all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why it has been uh, mentioned of such a great excellence and such a great merit. Allahumma ja'alni saburun wa ja'alni shakura wa ja'alni fi aini saghira wa fi ahyunin nasi kabira. And then in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than ordering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has again mentioned the aqimu salata. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to not just to read or recite our salah or not just to offer our salah, but to establish our salah. And I will highlight this fact that wherever in Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about salah, Allah always talks about the establishing of salah, not just the offering of salah. Allah mentions about the establishing of salah and establishing of salah is a whole system of life being tailored and being altered according to the system of Salah, according to the timings of Salah, according to the timetables of Salah, according to the planning of Salah. It starts, establishing of Salah starts when the person starts waiting for the time of Salah. The person listens and hears to the Azan and to the proclamation and repeats the words of the proclaimer. 
establishment of salah is after the proclamation saying and reciting the words of the tarud and then repeating the supplication taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then establishing of the salah the next step is to perform wuzu to perform wuzu completely perfectly as guided by quran and hadith in perfection and then after after wuzu to adopt the proper the clean pure and proper dress code as guided by quran and sunnah and then to find to find a clean a pure a uh, a quiet place for the offering of salah and then to stand erect in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of mind as if we are meeting our lord we are meeting our sustainer and creator and now the establishment of salah while we are offering salah is to take up and to establish and to adopt the exact steps of salah as taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam while we are standing in our ruku in our sujood and prostrations the exact mannerism of the of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is establishment of salah our heart is where we are our sight our gaze is were prescribed and taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we recite the words of quran in the right in the right manner in the right pronunciation this is all establishment of salah and our thoughts and our mind and our heart and our soul is not just wandering about all around the world sometime making our account sometime trying to find the lost keys sometime designing our dress in the during salah no the heart is where we are the soul is where we are the mind is what the what the what the what the lung what the tongue is reciting so this is all establishment of salah and then after we say assalamu alaikum and we finish off our salah the establishment of salah is to keep steadfast on all the training salah did for us to establish our life in form of punctuality to establish the purity of salah the purity of our dress the purity of our body the purity of our heart and soul which the salah has taught us and trained us in and then establishment of salah is to maintain to establish punctuality and discipline establishment of salah is to establish humbleness in our life to take out arrogance what salah taught us to establish brotherhood and fraternity in our life and establish all the traits and all the trainings the salah trained us to and then establishing of salah is not just to be bothered or to be worried about just our own salah establishment of salah is to establish the whole system of salah in our family in our houses the time routine the time we eat the time we sleep the time the food is served this is all establishment of salah and establishment of salah is what i talked about yesterday also wa mur ahlaka bis salah fastabir alaiha you order your family members to establish zakah we are not just going to be we are not just going to be selfish enough we are not just going to be self centered and egoistic that we keep on working and we keep on trying and striving and struggling by offering and establishing our zakat to prepare the key for our jannah and we forget and we forget our children we forget our children the mother the mother who gets up for tahajjud who offers the tahajjud salah and then she offers a very lengthy and a beautiful fajr salah but in front of her eyes in her presence her healthy and her youthful offsprings sleep 
They just sleep over the time of Fajr and she doesn't even ask them to give up, get up. She doesn't, doesn't even wake them up, request them or urge them. She is being extremely selfish. She is being an extremely selfish person, just preparing the first question of her day of judgment. She is just trying to prepare her key for Jannah and she is forgetful of the keys of Jannah of the rest of her family. So establishment of Zakat is trying to, trying to convince, try to motivate, try to urge the best gift, the best sincerity and the best thing which we can do to our loved ones is to motivate them towards Salah. To motivate a person towards Salah is the best gift we can do. The best thing which we can do to somebody is to remind them of Salah. Invite people towards Salah. For God's sake, Invite people to Salah. Rabbi ja'alli maqeem as-salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbi ja'alli maqeem as-salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbi ja'alli maqeem as-salati wa min zuriyati. So here Allah orders for aqeem as-salata. And then do what? Inna as-salata qanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta. Indeed, prayer has been decreed upon the believers as a decree of what? Specified times. No, here, here in this verse, last part of the verse 103, Allah is saying that prayers have been decreed as kitabam mawquta. Prayers are not only obligatory at any time. They are or they have been ordered they are being made obligatory on specific times. I repeat again that when in the initial period of the life, Makki period of life of the Prophet wasallam, there were two obligatory salah, one for the morning and one for the night. And then after the 12 years of prophethood, one year before the migration of Prophet wasallam. In the month of Rajab, the night of a session, Prophet ﷺ was ordered to and given five obligatory salah. Now, the timings, as far as Quran is concerned, about the specific timings, the names, the method of ordering the salah, there is actually no detail mentioned in the Quran. In the Quran, indirectly, indirectly in few verses, can we derive the order of the five prayers in a day. But I repeat that nowhere in Quran are the names of all the prayers mentioned. Like Allah does talk about Asr and Allah talks about, in fact, Allah swears about Fajr and Asr. And there are two, uh, two surahs of Quran which are named about after Fajr, Suratul Fajr and Suratul Asr. But there, the rest of the, the rest of the Salah are not even named in Quran. And Quran, we cannot get an understanding and comprehension about the timings and the time limits. And as to how many rakat and how, in which manner do we have to offer the salah? We get all this detail from hadith and sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It is only the hadith and sunnah which elaborates on the Quran. And without connecting with hadith and sunnah, we cannot complete, completely obey and accept all the commandments of the Quran. Now, how will we given the timings of the prayers was that after the night of a session, the very next day, Hazrat Jibra'il alayhi salam visited the Prophet wasallam five times. And these five times were the, the first day when he visited. These were every time he came, 
it was in the starting time of that prayer so <coughs> so first day he came five times first the starting time of fajr then the starting time of zuhur then asr then maghrib and isha the second day he again came five times but this day second day he came at the ending time of all the five salah that is the time beyond which we cannot offer that salah and the time of the salah finishes beyond which so the first day he came at the starting time of the salah and the second day he came at the ending time of the salah and thus on these two days the starting and the ending time of all the five salah was highlighted and told to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam indicated all these timings that were taught by hazrat jibril on these two previous days how by relating these timings with the timings of the sunrise of the sunset or related them with the size and the directions of the shadows because you know there were no clocks and there were no watches for time assessment <coughs> you know there were no clocks there were no watches for the assessment of time and in those days they used to use something like this uh, those uh, sand those hour glasses or they used to use those um, those sun dials so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to the conditions of that time uh, time of the sunrise and time of the sunset and the direction and the size of shadows he explained the timings of the salah for example um, he explained that the last time of uh, fajr will be the start of sunrise and the first time of uh, the maghrib will be the start of sunset and then the start of zuhur was explained immediately after the noon midday and the noon when the sun is right at the top of our heads and the sun when just starts descending then is the time of uh, zuhur starts and then the last time of zuhur and the first time of asr was mentioned as when the shadows they become the twice the size of the object <coughs> was mentioned that when the shadows of an object becomes twice the size of your object and similarly and so on so what we need to know and remember from here now is that for each salah there is a starting time and there is an ending time and between the two will constitute the total time period total time period during which if salah is offered then it will be accepted at as offered and it will be recorded in the deeds and beyond this time if the salah is offered it will be a qaza salah and a delayed salah the other thing which we know need to know also is that in this whole time period which of a salah which lies between the starting or the initial time and the ending or the last time the whole time period of salah no doubt in this time whenever close to the starting or close to the ending time whenever the salah is offered the salah will be held acceptable and we will have been we would have paid our farz but in this whole time period there is for every salah a time of excellence we need to know this time of excellence for the salah is the time that if the salah is ordered at that time of excellence then the person will be rewarded with the highest reward for the salah and the ranks of the salah will be will be raised like for fajr for zuhur for asr and for maghrib as close as we are to the starting or the initial time this is the time of excellence and as far as the maghrib salah is concerned the reward the reward promised for offering the salah of maghrib it falls at such a geometrical rate that it is 
the best to offer the maghrib salah as early as possible and as close to the starting time as possible but as far as the isha prayers is concerned as we see from the words of hadith and sunna the reward is greater if it is offered late the later it is offered the greater will be the reward and the greater will be the degree and ranks of the isha salah but obviously it will be for a person whose alertness and whose concentration is not affected because of him feeling tired or him feeling sleepy such a person who has been tired who is tired and who is sleepy can offer it at an earlier time also now another thing i would want to highlight here talking about the timings of salah is that all the day long that all the day long there is time for some salah may it be obligatory or supererogatory like when the time for zuhur starts when the time for zuhur ends the time for asr starts when the time of asr ends the time of maghrib starts when the time of maghrib finishes the time of isha starts and the last time of isha Uh, as by different words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to some it is the middle of the night that is midnight and according to some is the first two third part of the night is the time for isha whatever it may be the half of the night or the midnight or the two third of the night till that time when isha is offered it will be accepted as an obligation but if it is offered later than this then it will be a postponed or it will be a qaza sala of isha then after this time that is after midnight or after two thirds of the night is the time for salat tahajjud the most excellent prayers the most excellent of all the supererogatory salah is the salat tahajjud and it was a constant sunna of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which he never never ever left in his life so the last time of Uh, salat al tahajjud will be again the first time of salat al fajr and the last time of salat al fajr now what will be what the time of sunrise now we need to remember that there are three times of a day in which salah and prostration is prohibited these three times of the day are sometime after sunrise some time before the sun set and immediately when the sun is right at the top of our heads that is in the middle of the sky at noon midday the reason being the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that sun sets between the two horns of shaitan so refrain from prostration at these two times the sun rises and the sun sets between the two horns of shaitan so refrain from prostration in these two times the meaning of these words is that you know the people who used to worship the sun since at the time of sunrise and the time the sun is setting it is very easy to see the sun and we can fix the gaze because it is comparatively cooler and it is less radiant and less luminous so we can fix our gaze and more over the sun at these two timings is beautiful and so because of its impressiveness and because of being able to fix the gaze the people who used to worship the sun used to prostrate at these two timings so that is why we have been prohibited to prostrate in these two timings and also in the time of noon so other than that the we can there is always a time of salah any one or the other salah so now after half an hour of after the sunrise is the the time for the next three supererogatory salah these three supererogatory salah are collectively called as the salat az-zuha salat az-zuha comprises three salah and these are the three supererogatory salah number 1 half hour after the sunrise starts the time of salat al-ishraq and the time stays for about one and a half hour and after this time finishes the next salah is salat al-chashd 
and the time for this salat is charged again stays for about one and a half hour. And then after the time for salat charged finishes is the time for salah of awabin. And the time for this also stays for about one and a quarter of an hour or sometimes by some scholars is one and a half hour. And then there is the prohibited time of the midday or the noon and then starts the time for the zuhr salah. So throughout the day, there is continuously, other than the three prohibited times of the day, there is time of any salah, may it be obligatory or supererogatory. Now, before winding up, I would want to mention one thing. We need to all remember Allah, our sustainer, our creator, is extremely merciful and he does not provide us for just our basic necessities. Like he could have just provided us with clean air and pure water and basic food and clothes and shelter. But no, he doesn't do that. He has provided, he has given us provisions which are much, much beyond our needs. His bounties his blessings are superfluous, much, much more beyond our needs and beyond our desires. As he says in Quran, If you try to count the blessing and bounties of Allah, you will not be able to count them. So here I would request and suggest that when Allah gives us beyond what we need, Allah gives us more than what we ask for, then we being his slaves, we being the believers, we need not only to offer our obligatory prayers, but at least, at least one or more supererogatory salah, essentially. At least one or more supererogatory salah, essentially. If we have a very hectic schedules in our lives and we are very busy, and we cannot like get up for the most excellent supererogatory salah of the hajjud, then at least, at least ishraq, charged or avabin. And as far as fasts are concerned, not just the fasts of Ramazan, some other supererogatory fasts like the fasts of Mondays or Thursdays, the fasts of every month, the white days of the month like the 13th, 14th or every month, or the sixth fast of the month of Shabbal or the fast of the ninth or the tenth of the month of Rabi Ulawal or the ninth fast in the month of in the month of uh, Zilhaj or fasting in the month of Shaban in the first half of the month of Shaban, any other, any other fast beyond the month of Ramazan and then to spend other than Zakat some charity in the path of Allah beyond zakat. Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shakura rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da iz khadaytana wa hablana min ladunkar rahma innaka antul wahab subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ameen summa ameen Alhamdulillah, now we are proceeding towards our uh, finalizing sessions and tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be talking about the concept of trust in Islam and about uh, whispering and gossiping. And then we will be talking about uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ That everything in the world belongs to Allah. Then what we need, what we need to learn from this. And then there will be many other things we will be talking inshallah in tomorrow's session. I would again request all of you to share and to invite and to invite as many as you can 
towards all these sessions inshallah the person coming and attending these sessions and gaining faith and belief or starting to uh, shifting towards the obedience of allah because of your invitation will inshallah will be a source of continuous reward for you for all of us fi amanillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh